Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the finest Dawn of War 2 Eternal Modcasts this side of East Yorkshire. And today we've got a 2 vs 2 on Hydra's Chasm. Playing as the Eldar on the Outcast path, we have got Zaki Chan. And also playing as the Eldar on the Seer path, we have got Lord Goyce. Playing as the Imperial Guard on the Militarum Tempesta side of things, we have got Stealth. And playing as the Space Marines on the Reserve Company, we have got Chris. So this is quite exciting. Uh, I think it's the first time we've seen the Eldar on the Eternal Mod side of things on this channel. They've had a bit of a uh, rework. Well, not not so much as a rework. They've had a, they've had a bit of a, how would one say, a, a tweaking, especially in regards to their shields. So essentially, long story short, if you have not read the patch notes over on the Eternal Mods um, Discord, which the links to that will be in the description if you're interested, essentially their, their shields have been reduced in u uh, usefulness, I guess, since that they used to be able to... Uh, what was it? They blocked 60% of incoming damage and now they block 45% or some uh, essentially the shields have made, been made weaker and you can also only recharge your shields I think near a structure or something either way they've, they've just balanced the shields to make them less less or shall we say easier to kill and from the perspective of the Imperial Guard and the Space Marines easier to kill Eldar a happy days indeed got some Harlequins and a Guardian Defender Squad maneuvering over on this side as you can tell the uh, Outcast Path has got some Corsairs instead of the usual Guardians. And they're, they're, they're a little bit better. A little bit better Tier 1 stuff. Same with the Militarum Tempestus. They've got some Stormtroopers, which are just like the Imperial Guards regular squads, but a little bit better. And these guys are going to charge straight in. Not mincing around with their words. Inquisitor as well also getting in there for a good few strikes. Burnsinger goes down over here. Do like how they put an engine shield up. It'll help them stand the test of time. But this Ranger now losing his shield, and you see how quickly things are killed when the shield goes down. These guys are going to peace out A-Town quick as you like, allowing these triple squads of Stormtroopers to just hear those las las guns roar. A little bit of fire going on there as well, but we do have a... Who are you from? Who's, who's built you? Zaki-chan, you built that. Okay, fair enough. Get a little turret going to go on down there, defending one of the avenues of attack. We do have Lord Goyce. Or, or, or Geoyce? How, how does one pronounce that? But either way, he's going to come over here. And he's basically taken over this side. So even Stevens at the moment in regards to map control. Although very unfortunate that the Ranger Exarch has been smashed to the ground. I do call out the name Zaki Chan. It makes me think of... I know that last episode on... Well, last cast for the Eternal Mod. I mentioned a cartoon channel. I guess this is now going to be a running theme. But Zaki Chan makes me think of the adventures of Jackie Chan. Which is quite possibly one of the best cartoons ever made by man energy shield still up might want to destroy that at some point maybe make some maneuvers over this way to consolidate the holdings after all the only way to beat magic is with magic as uncle would say in the jackie chan adventure series no they're fine they're just gonna chill out over here maybe gonna maneuver over onto the middle side and see what they can do there's nothing really to capture in the central points of things but certainly want to deny the eldar any of their misgivings and misbegotten gains over on this side you want to see a sentry platform kind of just sprouting out from nowhere. But the Assault Marines are going to jump in. Knocking down those Howling Banshees. The Space Marines have also had a little bit of a change to how they work as well. I do believe that now, when they do melee damage, it's more of like an AoE effect. So you can get like a small amount of Space Marines into close combat and they can just bash everything quite nicely. Do have some Devastate Marines to join them as well though. Weren't quite there for assisting, but they're going to come in now. And with all the big stuff all up, turning it to... Oh dear, that's a... Good fortune. You want to turn around, young man. That is not the direction you want to be facing. There we go. Soul Marines getting in with the... Oh, where are you? The Guardian Defenders. Over on this side, we do have some Stormtroopers coming over. Getting a nice flank manoeuvre on that Sentry Shuriken platform. And dear, oh dear. Howling Banshee's absolutely wiped out. Farseer will have to run back home as well. Farseer, or shall I say the, the Seer Path, are the uh, Eldar equivalent to the Reserve Company. Both being quite defensive factions, able to get quite useful defensive platforms on the go. Whereas obviously the Militarum Tempestus is like the elite assault variant of the Imperial Guard. Whereas the Outcasts, I, d I think they're, like, they're kind of like a more like a utility kind of thing. A lot of their units that are different from the standard Eldar factions are basically like upgraded versions of uh, Rangers... Guardians, uh, trying to think, do they have a, 
I think they've got like a seer, uh, a, a seer dude who, who they can attach to squads and it increases their overall shield regeneration. He says, no degree of confidence, I'm still learning this game, much like everyone else. Damn it, look at how well, quickly those guys absolutely wiped out there. Still two, uh, got two guys left, but we need to come back and collect their spirit stones to return them to the infinite circuit. Got the ranger still just chilling out on the ground here. Not looking all that plussed about the situation and life choices he's been under. A good amount of guardian defenders over here as well as what are you? You are a dire avenger armed with las blasters. Uh, what do you do? Oh, it improves the squad's overall range damage. So not a particular anti-infantry, anti-whatever. It's just, hey, we do more damage and isn't that enough? Isn't that what all you want from us? Stormtrooper's gone for that assault kit. Hot shot las guns, overcharge greatly increases their range and damage. But all of these guys seem to have gone for, well, when I say all of them, there's only two left now. Must have lost one over here as it went for some sort of assault. Going to maneuver down the middle and see what they can see over on this side. And what they see is a lonely burn singer. Go on, get him. Get involved. Didn't survive very long, did he? Now they're going to attack this activated power beacon. Corsairs are going to move in. And look at the range on these bad boys. They're not messing around, are they? Are going to see a heavy tarantula bolt gun Madufa being put up by the engineer squad here. So no one's going to be coming around this time anytime soon. We do also have double stationary shuriken platforms. So a little bit of a standoff there. No one wanted to go in any which way direction. Captain over here, not got any of his upgrades. He's just going to tank as much damage as he can. Well, he can tank a fair bit of damage. Going to go down in the health department. These guys are going to jump straight in here. Double assault scores, but then jumping straight. Or should I say running away again? Come on, you had him. You had him on the run. Then again, I suppose with the Howling Banshees in there. Might have been a difficult situation. Need to start using your Devastators and your Assault Marines in tandem. Jump these guys in as these guys are setting up. But it is quite a micro-intensive kind of manoeuvre. Do now have a stationary Shuriken platform over here. Got to be fending off or, or hemming off this approach. So at the moment, really, the only way to get about places is through this general area. Or at least unless until they get some vehicles. Both Eldar players going to go for Tier 2. Almost synchronised, quite like that. But the Eldar certainly do have the majority of the map on lockdown at the moment. Farseer has gone for a Doombringer, giving her the Doom ability. Increased damage to a target unit. What's going on over here? Oh, we're having explosions. That's cool. Inquisitor coming in, going to bash some stuff. But she will be in a bit of a dangerous situation. Corsairs now also going to be firing. I was going to have a fed. Heck, you flip. This is a lot of money being put into shuriken platforms. And these guys can kind of be destroyed by more or less a singular vehicle, should they choose to go for one. But they do need to get to that tier two. Good lord, look at this just mass of Space Marine infantry. I mean, what? We've got Devastators, Assault Marines, Triple Assault Marines in the grand scheme of things. These guys, look at them getting, getting involved, not messing around. Captain also getting a few decent hits in there. Guardians and Corsairs trying to... Oh, sorry, not Corsairs, Dire Avengers getting a few shots in, managing to be able to spread themselves out wide enough. Where are you going, Space Marine man? Jumping in the air like you just don't care. Oh, look at that. Third squad of Assault Marines now. Getting these guys out of position. We'll get a good squad wipe on them. Nice one. Also got the Stormtroopers moving in as well. Full Eldar retreat on this side of the map now. Yeah, you could take on the Space Marines, but... That addition of the Stormtroopers towards the end of that engagement was what was really sealed the deal there. Assault Marines are going to jump in and now start bashing this secured uh, strategic point. So there we go. It's looking a little bit... Looking a little bit dangerous for the Eldari now, as this side of the map is beginning to fall. Still not much action on this side, neither. Got some slag plasma generators on all things. Webway gates as well for additional manoeuvrability of the Eldar. And we have got... Ooh, have you got a... Are you the seer thingy majiggy? I can't tell. It doesn't say on our upgrades, but it looks like a scene of some description. Got another one on these lads over here as well. Why are they called warlocks? Someone will tell me in the comments. They know more than I do. 
The Farsi has also got her Isha's Embrace, which increases her health and energy. Grants her the Spirit's Rights ability, which I imagine does some positive things for the Eldar. But lots of firepower coming in. Support platform team really bringing in the business. Being assaulted on all kinds of sides, but these jumping marines not taking no for an answer will just clear out anyone and everyone that gets in their path. Can't really argue with a chain sword. These guys just having a grand old time, jumping about every which way. Bane Wolf moving around with some chemical stuff. And yeah, like I say, I mean, don't get me wrong, like these investing a lot of money into this stuff. I mean, you'd normally go for like one or two, maybe. But three is a little bit overkill. And one singular Bane Blade can just not Bane Blade. Bane Wolf can just come in and smash these up. No troubles. Shadow Seer. Oh, you're the Shadow Seer. Look at her go. Let's get a good look at her. With her stripey trousers. Nice one. But yeah, she's going to come in and bash things about. I'm going to see this heavy bolt of tarantula also taking a bit of a licking as well. A desperate ranged battle there. Bane Wolf going to be forced to retreat from this Shadow Seer. But the moment gets a bit of distance. Able to absolutely smash up the shields of these guys. Ah, oh, the Ranger Exarch is out. He's got a Mist Shield. Clerks. The, oh, double L. A little bit of spelling error there. Oh, I, can't, I can't judge. I can't spell neither. Uh, Clerks, they wear it in a shroud of mist-like psychic energies, making them harder to hit. That's exciting. So, able to contend in a ranged scenario. But against all this, Kenny. Are you going to fire? Are you just chilling up? There we go. Look at that. Firing away. Shield is already quite low, though. Don't want to lose him too early after you've just rebuilt him. Going to get another stationary shuriken platform on the go. Inquisitor taking a face full of Bright Lance. Bane Wolf being repaired by the Engineer Squad. Let's have a look at the economy, shall we? 3, 5, 3, and 80, and 406, and 85, 83. Compared to 340 and 90 and 322 and 90. Lots of Space Marines doing what they do best. And to be fair, I think they've now cracked this. The Eldar had like a good advantage against one or two assault squads, but three in total, that's too much for them to deal with. And now beginning their tier twos, although still able to hold their own. Oh, that's because a Firestorm has come in. Firestorm is very effective against... Infantry. Devastator Marine Squad will have to fall back without any kind of support. Got double Stormtroopers though. Again, if, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Just do the same manoeuvres as before. Going to come around on this side. Do love that firing animation. Glorious stuff. Throwing a couple of grenades in there just for good measure. But against this Firestorm, very little that they can really do. But they have got... Have you got medics in you? I'm going to assume that those white backpacks are medics because they've got like this health regen aura around them, bad looks of things. But the Firestorm is not taking any damage whatsoever. It's shield out-genning or out-regenning the incoming DPS, so it's quite nice. We have a Harlequin Troop Squad, which is what the Outcast half gets, which are, from what I can understand, basically, they're like an improved version of the Howling Banshees. It's quite nice little models there. Got the Corsair squads moving in, destroying everything and getting the slag deposit down. But the Bane Wolf will be the bane of their lives, throwing lots of goopy goops all over the place. And there we go, they do take it down. Might want to retreat these guys there. Don't want to lose this squad unnecessarily, but they will be taken down sadly. This tarantula turret really gaining its, its pay there. Still a fair whack. Oh, I've got some warp spiders. Warp spiders are always good for outflanking and outmaneuvering. And when those assault marines jump in, start smashing things up, the warp spiders, well, they could just jump away, can't they? So no more focus on the uh, guardians for Lord Goyce, bad looks of things. Just going to focus on the big things, the big ticket items, shall we say. And yeah, we've got tier 3 for the Imperial Guard. We've got tier 3 on the way for Farsia. Or the Seer Path um, 
Eldar, shall we say. Ranger on the edges of combat. You have the Inquisitor calling down some sort of explodey things. Potentially. And look at the Harlequin troops. Look at the speed that they just maneuver in. And these guys don't mess around against anyone. They can basically destroy most things. Very fragile, though. Gotta, gotta be careful. I mean, what their shield is, 250 maximum, compared to... Oh, that's another troop. Hold on, let me compare and contrast. Give me another unit. 390, yeah, that, that most, most other units have. Even the support platform team has more shield than the Harlequin troops. Just gotta be very careful with them. Salt Squad gonna jump in. Howling Banshees armed with their Blades of Isha. Flaming Power Swords improving output damage. These ladies got halfway through capturing that slag deposit, but the Space Marines like, no, you can't have it. That's not yours, young lady. Be gone. Devastator Marines now with double las, can uh, las cannons. So this Firestorm has got to watch out. It's not in the prettiest of situations. I mean, the Warp Spiders might be able to counter them. Where are you going, Stormtrooper Squad? Walking into double Shuriken platform fire. Oh, Firestorm, don't do it. Don't be brave. Don't be a hero. Let the Warp Spiders jump in and deal with them. Although, then again, in saying that, if they jump in before the Assault Squad actually do anything, they're in a bit of a dangerous situation. The Assault Squad being shot up by the Warp Spiders. A double Bright Lancers over here. The Space Marines have not gone for any vehicles at the moment, so the Bright Lancers won't be all that effective against this sheer mass of genetically modified muscle. Wolf might need a bit of a repair. There we go. We've got some engineers coming in to, to patch things up. Inquisitor looking longingly over at the slag deposit. It's, it's no man's land at the moment. Oh, what are you? You are a wasp. Let's have a look at you, young man. It's quite cool. Quite nifty. Quite like how the window has like this diamond-esque kind of texture to it. Look at it for double wasps. Wasps. Say that ten times fast. Battle equipment on the way. Now, I'm not sure how good these guys are against things. He's going to go for twin star cannons. I mean, you should be able to stand up against the heavy bolter tarantula much more easily than when compared to the regular infantry. Everything a little bit of a standstill at the moment. We've got a... Ooh, a Bulgrin squad. These dudes with some shields. And a big, meaty stick. The Eldar bashing pole... And, ah, Razorback for the Space Marines. So, uh, the addition of vehicles will be really useful for the Space Marines, so long as their assault squads can take down these support platform teams with their Bright Lances. If they're able to do that, then they can move their Razorbacks in. Where they're going to go for twin Link Last Cannons. Is this one? Oh, are you just staying as a regular one, just for infantry? Six. But yeah, the, the combined arms should be very difficult for the Eldar on this northern side to deal with. I've gone for fire... Ooh, fire dragons. Bright and orange. Oh, hold on. We are missing an engagement going on down here. Look at that map awareness. Bulgrins being infiltrated. I do believe that, yes, the Inquisitor has gone for the interrogator's armor, allowing her to infiltrate some lads. to sneaky boys. But not quite able to deal with the constant firepower from the wasps here. Good effort, though. On this side, we do have... All the assault squads coming in. Braving all the firepower. There we go, look at that. Just absolutely massacring the Shuriken platform teams. Getting both teams down. Losing a squad, in, in fact, losing two squads in the process. In fact, losing all their squads in the process. Is it worth it? We've now got the Razorback on the front lines. Devastators opening fire. And all these guys are going to fall back. Firestorm goes down. Got some ranger squads opening fire as well. These guys are going to be retreating for reasons beyond my ken. The Razorback. Oh, because of the Wasp. Fair enough. The Wasp goes down from the Razorback. Now got the Stormtroopers able to move in. Or move out. Where are you going? Come on. Be brave. Move forward. Although then again, in saying that, got a bajillion million shuriken platforms about. You don't really want to accidentally get caught out of position. Got a big turret in placement. So Imperial Guard not wanting to move forward. Harlequin troops ready and willing to get involved. Wasps now three in number. Where are they three in number? Oh, you sent one and they died, so... That was the replacement wasp. 
No one really being able to push all that far out. Not at the moment, at the very least. Chris says he's going to go defensive. Which, to be fair, after all the assault marines die, no point in kind of rebuilding them. They've done the damage, but they haven't really been able to capitalize on the damage that they've done. Has given the Eldar a bit of time to renew their fighting forces and regain their positionings over here. Bulgrin squad waddling about. Going to be maneuvering down the center path. Which, I mean, if you wanted to... I mean, these, so, a bit of fear crafty, yeah? These guys are all set up nice and comfortable. These guys have... Oh, wow, you, look at the speed on these bad boys. You don't mess around, do you? Quick as you like. Never mind my fear crafting. Let's just watch these guys. <laughs> so, a double shot from the last cannons instantly wipes them out. Yeah, they, these guys aren't the, the strongest of people. An impulse marine squad. Marines known for their ability to give in to their intrusive thoughts. I assume that's what impulsor means. And to go on the way as well. But yeah, so everyone's kind of um, entrenched in their positions. You could like take your Bulgrins and take other things and kind of like attack other places where they're weaker. So then kind of force them out of their um, their holdings. But I suppose in this scenario, you can only really attack down this way or this way. And both are covered to the brim with sentry turrets. So it's not going to be an easy situation for anyone to deal with. Got triple, well, so not triple, just one heavy weapon squad, but with all three lads in there. Got a auto cannon. Got an infiltrated Inquisitor coming in. A Liber Her Her Heresius. Really increases the amount of maximum energy in the Inquisitor. She's going to stand in the middle. And these guys will be spotted. Wasp's going to fire away at them. But these wasps, as quick as they are, are nowhere near tanky enough to be a frontline assaulting unit. Absolutely annihilated. Two of them going to go down. Two of a manticore out now, which will be ideal for smashing up this defensive placement. I suppose that's another thing that you can do for trying to take on something that's been defended quite well. You've got to, you, you know, use, use artillery. And that way they'll be like, oh no, we can't stay here. There's loads of bombs on that. I suppose maybe this is why a lot of, there's, there's a bit of debate going on at the moment. Oh, got a Dreadnought coming in. Howling Banshee's going to try and get involved. Dreadnought taking a fair bit of damage, actually, from these ladies. Also, we've got the... Have we got any Shuriken Cannons? No, oh, Bright Lances doesn't seem like it, but either way, that Dreadnought did not survive for very long. Forcing the Space Marines back once again. Razorback going to see if they can defend this secured strategic point, but does not look like it. This might actually be an assault on the base. An assault on the base that might be fairly useful. Although well, it does not seem like it. They will fall back as this Bulgrin squad comes in. Shields are raised. Ready to give these Guardians, or these Eldar, sorry, a good slap around. Manticore throwing down some explosions. Go and get him. You could do it. No, no, never mind. Not sure what that was then. Either way, they've avoided stuff, but the firestorm does go down. Wasps buzzing about. But yeah, as I was saying before, that engagement went proper. Um, so this is a annihilation match, which I mean, I I I I, I could take a leave in an annihilation match because obviously, it, it you're always guaranteed to see the big units come out. Which is always nice to see. But, as we've seen at the moment, if this was a victory condition, or a victory point match, the Elder would have probably won by now, just because of how many spaces that they've had to, or, or have had captured for so long. I wonder if in an Annihilation match, what, what what could do to... Hmm. I've been numbing and arming about, about things that you could do to maybe animate the Annihilation match a little bit more dynamic. But I, I'm not entirely sure, because like... Ideally, you want the bases to be a little bit easier to assault. Just so then, well, you can you can do some base harassment. But then it's hard to really balance that out, especially with the Imperial Guard having things like the ability to drop three squads of conscripts in the first 60 seconds of a match. 
So not entirely sure how he would balance that, but some options for base harassment would be very ideal. Kind of like in Dawn of War 1. Then again, I am kind of biased towards Dawn of War 1 things. That is kind of where I stand the majority of the time. Hi, right, well, it's Harlequins. Not yet to taste combat by the looks of things. They'll have taken a bit of damage from something, somewhere. No one really manoeuvring around at the moment. Manticore in the centre, ready to open fire as and when needed. Anyone going to be building anything useful at the moment? Well, I mean, Zaki-chan and Chris are still in Tier 2 at the moment. Not wanting to stretch out into that Tier 3. Got the economy for it, by the looks of things. But I've yet to decide to spend all that money. There we go, just as I mentioned it, Anvil Tactics, Tier 3. On the go, he's going to get Terminators. Whether the Terminators can stand up against the constant fire. Ooh, look at you, a Type 2 Cobra. This is the... Uh, the Sea Path's big gun. And what a big gun that is. That's it, it's not about... It's not about how big your gun is, it's about how you use it. And well, they all don't have birth in that regard. Wasp's going to come in. And they seem to be defending themselves a little bit better this time. But Man's got throwing down some stuff. Two Wasps go down. Devastator Marines. Also, not a Devastator Marines, that's just a regular old captain. In the wrong place at the wrong time, my dude. Razorback sent to, sent back to the repair shop. Type 2 Cobra. Ready to open fire. More man's car stuff being thrown down. Big explosions. As the Bulgrins get involved, we'll have to retreat there. Not only so much you could do against point blank range fire from a Type 2 Cobra. Inquisitor now armed with her Inferno pistol grants the judgment ability to deal massive damage to a single target. Look at those. Firing literal. I mean, what should we call them? Um, uh, black holes, whatever you call it. The, the spinny space stuff. Like a whirlpool, but in space. Have to, I mean, I'm not quite the same level as Neil deGrasse Tyson, but I'll, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll attempt to explain space stuff. Anyway, yeah, judgment going on that Type 2 Kerber, but he doesn't mind. He's got the shield on, baby, and he's just going to take that while regening stuff as he goes. Captain going to manoeuvre around, see if he can get some shots in. But casual as you like, not messing around whatsoever. Over on this side, yes, the Harlequins are still here. Still chilling, got a Wraith Guard squad. They have gone for the... What are you? You are a... Warlock, seer person. Dude that makes them walk faster. And they fire Prism. Alright, so it does seem like that the... Uh, well, Lord Goyce is going for a few more bigger things. Hoping to maybe crack the solid nut that is the Space Marines. They've got for... I mean, they've not got much in the way of a fa standing fighting force at the moment. They've got some Terminators. So they're going to be coming in. With their power fists. The Storm Bolters. Captain with his Heavy Bolter going to suppress this far seer. Was now gone for her Macca's, Ma Matches, Wraith Wing. Increase Farsi's health and energy and grains the uh, le le Levitation Field ability. Oh, that's the one where she picks everyone up and then throws them around everywhere. That's the coolest ability, by the by. Lord guys, help me for the final push. And with that, the Wasps are activated. Look at them go. It's 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 a thing of beauty. It's like it's like a migrating herd. Go on, get involved. Get 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 some killing done. What's going on? The fire prism is going to lead the charge, and this is quite a serious force to deal with. Man's cause firing stuff somewhere. Ah, they're over here, but not quite where they were. Not quite in the best of places. Stormtroopers moving over as well as some Bulgrins. Wasps will be easy to take down, but the main fighting force is over here, that Type 2 Cobra. I mean, if that's how strong a Type 2 one is, I don't imagine what a Type 3 would even smell like. With some Wasps being swatted by the Bulgrins. Lehman Russ coming in, but... And you don't want to mess with the Imperial's finest piece of machinery going on there. Bulgrins look like they'll be taken down. No, no, never mind, they've... Uh, 
Gone for a retreat, narrowly surviving death. Harlequins there, and the Rangers coming in. And the combined armies of the Eldar going up against the combined armies of the Imperial forces. Not sure if they've got enough. I mean, the Type 2 Cobra's doing all right, but the shield it's fading a little bit. Shadows here, and the Harlequins getting some good shots on the back of this Razorback. Also got a Dark Reaper squad. There we go for next arc in there. Demon Rush goes down. Fire Prism taken out there. And it does seem that the Eldar might have victory this day by the looks of things. Can the Imperial Guard... I mean, the Imperial Guard's still got a lot of stuff left for him, but most of it's infantry. Not much of it is really anti-vehicle. But they will hold the line. Whatever the cost may be. Orbital Relay. Oh. Got some Valkyrie booby bits coming in. Doing a lot of damage to these guys over here. A Wraith Seer on the way with some Wraith Burn research on the go. Harlequins and Wraith Burn or Wraith Guard squad joining in. Although running into close combat, probably not where they wanted to be. And it seems that against all odds, the force of the Imperium able to hold this off, although losing a fair bit of their structures as the battle went on. Sniper Man, he's been taken down. Rift Guard squad focusing on that orbital relay, but these Terminators are not going to let them have at it. And the Rift Guard goes down. Rift Seer probably also wants to bees back home. That was actually quite surprising. I, I was not expecting that. Has the... Where's the Type 2 Kerber? Oh, you've, you've taken a fair bit of damage, but you are going to be repaired by this Burn Singer here. Well, that's quite nice. Recycling stuff. You guys have died, but you're going to just stand there. That's fine. Before fading off into the distance. Got this Harlequin troop once again coming in. But not quite able to stand up to all that pressure. Fire Dragons again with their Exarch. Unable to really stand up against all of this. Now getting a taste of their own medicine, having to walk into the heavy fire of some weapons. Inquisitor sneaking in. This Inquisitor seems to have done a lot more sneaking than the uh, than the Ranger Exarch. It's quite interesting. Got some what? What's inside of you? Oh, it's uh, Blumen. Can we have a look at him? Oh, haha. Hmm. The way that the health bar looks like as if it was saying that someone's inside the guard tower. It's not, it's just it's just the destroyer coming out. It's a little stubbly, stubbly gun. I'm gonna go for additional armor plating. We are losing our power to the destroyer enemy. heavy tank hunter. Should be quite nice to take it down this Rave Seer. Might even be able to do a bit of damage towards this type 2 Kerbera. But it doesn't seem to be getting his health improved. Are the Eldar able to repair their vehicles, I wonder? I mean, the Burn Singer doesn't seem too keen on it. He's building up a energy shield in anticipation for the assault that is to come. We are seeing a Land Raider now out, or on the way out soon. So two Cobra versus Land Raider. Not sure who's going to win that one. I imagine with the current compositions of both armies. I mean, these Wasps... They, they seem good. But I don't think they're... As a late game unit, I don't think they scale all that well by the looks of things. Oh, got some explosive stuff. A little bit of fire. To reduce the initial shields. Jail or don't man, they can tank that. However, once those shields go down, they're really cruising for a bruising. Land Raider, bright white. Ready to say goodnight. Goodnight. As everyone looks like they're poised for an assault. Every weapons teams with their last cannon. Stormtroopers on the back. They've been alive this entire game. Used wonderfully all the way through. Tank, heavy tank. Oh, sorry. Tank, heavy tank? Destroyer tank. Heavy tank hunter looking ready to smite down all this stuff. I mean, there's lots of vehicles. Double fire prisms, firestorm, type 2 cobra. All the wasps you could ever want. To People just need to get involved. Inquisitor. I mean, a little sniff around at that requisition point. And a tactical scout squad with a wonderful flowing cape. How pretty is that? 
Anyway, the Eldar are going to go on for the assault. Rafes here and Fars here making their initial attacks. Got a soul storm going on down there. Land Raider taking the brunt of the damage. But the Farseer does go down. Terminator's not feeling too comfortable around the Warp Storms. Oh, look at that. Wonderful little ability by the Inquisitor. Stunning lots of people. Also, wonderful circle of damage. But Land Raider still holding on strong. Although, will turn its back to all these guys. Captain standing defiant against the Eldar firing line. Guardian's very low on health at the moment. Has been suppressed. Terminator, there's only two left. Umming and arming whether they should get involved. Fire Prism goes down. Got another. What are you? What's coming in for you? Oh, it's going to be a Seer Council squad. Teleporting around the back, but then instantly retreating as they have been stunned by the captain. Type 2 Cobra looking to get away from this Inquisitor as damage done to him will be increased. The Inquisitor has been shot down. Well, the push continues, and look look at that. The moment that shield goes down, how easy and quick it is to, to destroy that vehicle there. Lord Goyce looks like he's throwing out that GG there. As the Imperial Guard decide to now finally go over onto this side, to be destroying all these Vol and Webway gates. So it's a bit close. I've got, I've got to say, a little bit of a little bit of a lengthy game. But the Eldar certainly looked like they were going to win with that earlier on push into the Space Marine base from the northern side. But they, no, the, the, the Imperials defended quite nicely and then built up their forces and are now just having, having a gay old time destroying anything and everything that even looks or whiffs of Eldar nonsense and heresy. Cool, anyway, if you want to support the channel, £1 a month to get you one extra game of Dawn of War a week on the old Patreon. Also, there's a Discord. Like I mentioned, there's there's my one uh, where stuff happens. I'll also put the Eternal mod down below. So if you like this game and like this mod, then you can, you can go out and, and try it for yourself and send me replays so I can then do more videos like this. Uh, cool, anyway, mine's been Miss Landshark. Pleasure as always, never a chore. I shall see you in a bit. Peace.